Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's talk about what went right and what went wrong at Winter Fill Day. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so we're going to kind of move quickly through the what went right portion. Uh, if you aren't interested in that and you just want to skip ahead to some of the new gear I tested and the failures of Phil Day, I'll leave a notation right here on the screen so you can go ahead and fast forward to that. Uh, this was my first fill day to run a QRP radio, and that decision was really based on what the weather was going to be during, weather, uh, during winter fill day. So I knew that I was going to be dealing with completely overcast skies both days, and that was going to limit the amount of power I was able to generate with the solar panels. So I did choose to use the Yezu 817, and I've got to say that I was pleasantly surprised with the results. Uh, so that, uh, that choice of radio was definitely a, the, the right choice to make, and it went extremely well for me. Uh, for the antenna that I used, I used my own InFed half wave. And that worked great on both uh, 20 and 40 meters. I also spent about an hour trying to make a contact on 15 meters with JS8 Cull, and uh, it just wasn't happening. So just uh, there was nobody else there, or if they were there, we couldn't hear one another. Now let's talk about the batteries that I carried and how that worked out for me. I carried two of the Miati 8 amp hour batteries, and those actually performed great. I've already told you guys I wasn't able to collect any solar power. In fact, I didn't even bother putting the solar panels out. Uh, I knew from experience I just wasn't going to gain uh, anything worthwhile by putting the panels out. Uh, but let's see, the first battery, I had estimated I would get five hours or just over with each uh, of the eight amp hour batteries and I actually got six and a half hours of runtime out of the first battery. I never did even deplete the second battery. I believe I drained around 6.6 .6 amp hours out of the second one, but I had to close up my station a couple of hours early uh, so I didn't get uh, to, to participate in the last couple of hours of winter fill day but I never ran out uh, of the second battery using the 817 radio. So based on the usage that I saw, I would have had plenty of power left to have operated the entire 24-hour uh, period, uh, even if I had to move over to that bio Eno battery that you guys saw in my loadout uh, video. So I would have had plenty of battery power, and that was kind of awesome that I could get through the, the full... Uh, winter fill day and do it completely on batteries without relying on even solar charging to top the batteries off. Now, even though I didn't use solar panels, I did use the Buddy Pole Power Mini uh, in line with my batteries and my radio just so that I could monitor how much battery I had actually used. Now, let's talk about the Raspberry Pi for a second. Uh, that worked great. I was running a Raspberry Pi 3 and I used primarily JS8 Call to make my contacts. I did make several Winlink connections. Uh, I made some to a 2 meter uh, local uh, Winlink gateway and I made some to HF Winlink gateway. So I wanted to kind of test both of those. I wasn't sure I could get into the local gateway from the cabin, uh, but I was able to. But uh, I also wanted to test. Uh, HF on 40 and 80 meters with the particular setup that I was using. Both of those worked great. I did run into one little issue with the Raspberry Pi, and I'm not sure if it's because I was using the older Pi 3 or if it was JS8 Call. JS8 Call is not something I typically run on that particular Raspberry Pi. Uh, but I did, it, uh, did experience a complete lockup of the Raspberry Pi 3 on Sunday morning. I'd ran all night, Sunday night, shut the station down, booted everything up Sunday, and run for about an hour 
um, when it, it just locked up. And I mean, it locked up to the point I had to pull the power cable to uh, reset it and then uh, plug it back up to reboot. That was the only little glitch I ran into, not certain what it was, and I wasn't able to replicate it to try to troubleshoot uh, what was going on. So may have just been one of those little glitches that you may run into from time to time, uh, but it was easy enough to resolve. Now let's talk about some of the new items that I tested, some of the new gear. This is not uh, really radio related per se. Uh, the first item is this cool little uh, lantern by Goal Zero. And I was pleasantly surprised with this. Uh, it's got three different light output levels, and I bet that handle, my green screen's killing the little handle that's on it. Um, but this thing's got three different output levels of light. Uh, so it's got a high, a medium, and a low. And I wound up getting about 14 hours of runtime out of this. In fact, I cut it down to its low setting overnight while I took a nap and didn't even shut it off because I really wanted to see how much runtime I got out of it. And guys, I'll leave links to some of this stuff down in the description below if you're interested, but I'm definitely going to be picking up three or four more of those lanterns. Uh, oh, one other thing I didn't show you. Let me grab that back. It's got a solar panel right on the top. Now, I haven't tested how long it'll take the solar panel to recharge uh, the battery that's in it, but you can either recharge it with solar or with uh, a USB cable. Something else that I tested was a new keyboard. This thing is super thin. What I like about it over the other one that I used uh, in the past is this one is closer to a full-size keyboard, so that's uh, the primary thing with it, and it's backlit. Uh, again, I've got green on here, so my green screen is going to completely take it out. Uh, but it's got two or three different colors that you can use for backlighting. And I got uh, about 10 hours of runtime out of uh, that new keyboard. So I was a lot happier with that keyboard just because it was a little bit larger and made typing on it without looking at the keyboard quite a bit easier. Now, this next item up is not, uh, it's not something new for me, but I had several questions on it, uh, either in the comments or over on Patreon. In fact, I think I even got an email about it, and that was a little cook pot and stove that I was using. So, this is it here, and uh, the entire thing, the, everything fits inside uh, the cup, and it weighs roughly one pound with everything. Now, that includes the stove and the fuel inside of here. So, let's go ahead and pop the top off of it. It also gives you a drinking uh, port after you're done using it. But inside, you just get uh, a little pot holder so you can grab it off the stove while it's hot. Uh, this is a little stove that I've got. Now, the stove didn't come with the cook set. Uh, it was a separate purchase. Again, guys, I'll leave links to this down below if you're interested. Now I keep a piece of aluminum foil in here that I can use as a windshield if I'm outside. Kind of helps with the uh, making the stove a bit more efficient. Uh, this little guy here folds out. Let me see if I can show you this. And all it is is uh, just kind of a little, um, it, it makes the fuel canister base a little bit wider so that it's more stable when you set it down. And then last but not least is the canister of fuel in here. So the stove screws right on top uh, this way, and then the base would be sitting underneath it here. Uh, and I only bring that up because, uh, like I said, I got several questions on it, uh, either in the comments uh, or over on Patreon. So I did want to uh, just kind of throw that in there real quick. Now, let's talk about the failures. And I did have a few. Uh, seems like I can never go into the field without having a few failures. Although they are getting uh, to be a bit more minor each time I go out. First of all, the bag that I was using for the kit. Uh, that was a bag that I had originally purchased for the QRP kit when I was just using it with a couple of small batteries and the entire weight of the QRP kit was about 10 pounds. In that particular case, the bag worked great. 
However, for field day, I was loading quite a bit more gear into that particular bag. Uh, the bag weight swelled to around uh, 20 pounds, 20 pounds and some change somewhere in that neighborhood. And I'm going to have to say, if I had to carry that bag more than the 30 yards from the Jeep to the cabin, it would have been absolute misery. So I will be looking into a different type backpack once we get past uh, that 10, maybe 12 pound range, uh, because the backpack that I've got now or it's actually a sling bag, but the one I've got now is just completely uncomfortable if you put more weight in it than that. Uh, one other thing, uh, this was kind of a oops and an attaboy all at the same time. I had the uh, power cable that I needed for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, both the Fire Tablet and the new keyboard take that same USB cable and I failed to bring a second one with me. So that's something I'm going to have to add to the checklist. Uh, a lot of times when I go out, I'm only out for, you know, three or four hours and I've never had to recharge those. Uh, but being a full 24 hour um, event, I did need to recharge them. Now, uh, I got the attaboy back because I was able to uh, walk up to the Jeep and get my two meter everyday carry kit and rob the cable out of it that I needed to recharge the tablet and the keyboard. So I just kind of alternated between the two uh, in, in keeping those charged up when they needed it. Now, one other uh, thing that I really want to look at in the future because this was kind of a failure. While the lantern worked out really well as I was moving around the cabin, uh, or if you were out camping somewhere, the, the lantern would do well at lighting the radio station. But if you wanted to get up and walk away for a bit, maybe to make coffee or maybe to grab something to eat or something like that, you really need to have a headlamp with you. And that was something that uh, I just haven't taken in the past. I ended up using the uh, a spare flashlight that I had with me but it would have been much nicer to have had a headlamp. So that's probably something I'm going to be adding to the kit going forward. Now, last but not least, I tell you guys, you've got to get out and practice, practice, practice this stuff. Well, I didn't heed my own advice. And let me tell you, watching something or watching someone do something on YouTube does not count as practice. Case in point was the throw line and the throw bag that I had bought back when I put together the QRP kit. I had never actually gone out and tried to deploy that in the field. I've always used uh, the different fiberglass masks to hoist my antenna up. And uh, regardless of what the first video or Tuesday's video showed, uh, um, it did not go very well at all. Uh, and I'm gonna gonna kind of leave it right there, but I, let's just say that that did not go well at all, and that's strictly because I didn't practice before I tried to take it into the field. So whatever piece of gear you get, whether it's an actual radio or whether it's an accessory that's going to help you in the field uh, when you're playing radio, take those things out and practice with them. You'll save yourself a lot of frustrations once you do get into the field. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. There's my after action report for Winter Field Day 2021. I'd love to hear about your experiences uh, down in the comments below. What worked for you? What didn't work for you? What was a complete failure? Uh, because if you're honest with yourself and you look for those failures and learn from them, you will be a better operator going forward. All right. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.